Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be. But you don't know where to begin. You have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, our truth treatment products, skin health issues, anything we're talking about here today, or have been talking about the glycocalyx, the membrane, membrane re lipid replacement. If you have any questions about anything we're talking about, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off our website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories, we've got blog posts, videos, lots of great information, plus the longevity products. And join the team now, uh, join the team link that you can click on if you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, be in business for yourself, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. I also want to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth treatment products. If you're buying ordinary skincare products, folks, you're paying a lot of money for fillers, for thickeners, for water, for silicon, for oil, vegetable oil. By the way, vegetable oil does not belong on anybody's skin. Vegetable oil is for your salad, not for your skin. And even then, you've got to be careful. The same problems with vegetable oils that you have, that we have uh, when we ingest them, namely their instability is why you don't want to use vegetable oils on your skin. Yet, if you look at most so-called moisturizing skincare products, you're going to see safflower oil or olive oil or grapeseed oil or various kinds of oils. So uh, we don't use oils. That's why I've never used oils in any, any of my formulations, with the exception of jojoba oil, J-O-J-O-B-A, jojoba oil, is not really an oil. If you're looking for an oil-like feel, but you don't want to use oil, and you, and you know about the problems associated with oil, you want to look for jojoba oil which you can find pretty readily. And I do use a little jojoba oil sometimes. I like, I like putting jojoba oils in cleansers. Leaves a nice, uh, leaves a nice uh, soft, soft uh, kind of effect to the skin after you wash your face. Nonetheless, for the most part, vegetable oils are best avoided on your skin. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. And we have been talking about the membranes, membranes that the uh, and the, uh, magic occurs at the level of the membrane. That's kind of like one of my philosophies. This idea, yesterday we were talking to a caller. I don't know if he's listening. He's talk, we're talking about the fear of change. This is the underlying fear that we all have is the fear of change. This is, uh, Thoreau said, men leave lives of quiet desperation. And underneath all of us, if we're honest, we'll see that we're living our lives somewhat in fear because our change is inevitable. And the number one, the only real fear is is fear of change. Fear of death is really fear of change. Fear of um, spiders is really fear of change. Fear of anything is really a f that we're scared that that thing's going to somehow 
change us, hurt us. It's always about fear of change. That's the only really fundamental fear. And because change is inevitable, we're all living our lives in fear. We all live our lives, as Thoreau said, in, in quiet desperation. There's a fear of change. And the reason the, the membrane represents change, things are always in high energy, dense energy at the levels of a membrane because two things are kind of happening simultaneously. The thing that's on the outside of the membrane, the thing that's on the inside of the membrane. And the membrane is the key to health, the key to understand. We always say all disease is cell disease, but all cell diseases really starts off as a problem at the level of the membrane. And not only is there a membrane on the cell, there's a membrane on the membrane, and that's a membrane of sugar. And it sits on the membrane of fat, which sits on the mostly protein cell, protein, fat, and sugar. That's that, the whole complex, the whole cell, membrane, membrane complex, protein, fat, and sugar. And it, the fact that protein, fat, and sugar make up the three, the three main food groups, and they're also the three components of this cellular complex, is no coincidence. We eat to make our cells. That's the reason we eat food, is so that our cells can... This, we eat so our cells... We eat to make our cells, and then our cells in turn make us. It's like a, a big circle. We eat food, goes into the cells, the cells turn that food into stuff that makes us, which then eats more food, which then makes more cells, which then makes more stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's the big loop. And that's why you got to keep eating. But you, that's why you got to eat. So that's, that's why we have to eat all, all our lives. Of course, you know, intermittent fasting and such. You, there, you, you, can, you can and should fa uh, fast periodically. But for pretty much if you uh, take out the days that we don't eat, we're pretty much spending, certainly animals uh, in the wild are, spending most of our time eating or looking for food. It's to make the cells so the cells can make us. But you got to... You got to eat the right kind of foods. You got to, this is why eating intact cells is so important. How do we eat intact cells? We eat unprocessed food. Unprocessed food is really food whose cell nature has remained pretty much intact. Processing disrupts, destroys cells. If you're in, trying to you know, subsist on only processed food, you're not going to get the cells. And that means you're not going to get the stuff to make the cells. You want to, even juicing or boiling can cause cellular disruption. Even, even slightly steaming can cause cellular disruption. And I'm not saying that you don't want to do that sometimes. You definitely do. You definitely do want to juice sometimes. You got to boil and simmer soup or, or bone soup. You got to boil and simmer the cartilage so the stuff comes out in the water. You, you do have to process your food, certainly. But you want to make sure you got a huge proportion of your food as cellular, as unprocessed, as unprocessed as possible. Yes. There are nutrients that are in foods that need to be processed out. You need to release the nutrients of some foods because the, the, the cells are all, uh, especially, this is true, especially about plants, the cells have a wall around them. Plant cells have a wall around them, and it's tough to get into the nut nutritional components that are inside the cell. So veggies sometimes need to be steamed or, or, uh, or, or juiced. That's true. Cooking meat releases some of the protein. So you know, there's a lot of archaeologists and anthropologists who believe that cooking meat is when human beings made their big leap into uh, creativity. It's when the brains really started to evolve is when we started to cook meat because you release nutrients when you cook meat. That is true. But the fact remains that the more unprocessed cellular food, that is food, uh, cell, uh, food that still has its cellular nature, and that means eggs, sushi, uh, seaweed, algae, produce, vegetables, and fruits, of course. That, that's your ultimate in cellular food. Um, and it turns out, I, interestingly, or not, you know, not coincidentally, these are all power foods. What we, call, what we call power foods are foods that have their cellular nature somewhat intact. And the more foods we eat of these nutritionally dense foods, that, or these cellularly, cellularly dense foods, the more nutritionally complete we will be. Yay for the egg, by the way. As I've said many times, I'll say it again. An egg is an egg cell. It has everything, including a membrane. And if you are depriving yourself of eggs because of some misguided, misguided fear of cholesterol, hopefully nobody listening to this program is, but a lot of people out there are, you are missing the mother load of good cellular nutrition because an egg is a cell. All right, 844 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this.
Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010, excuse me, is our number on the bright side. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. And 24-7 on the archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com, also BrightSideBen.com. You can purchase Longevity products at BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, or CriticalHealthNews.com. And you can purchase all Truth Treatment products at TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking about the cell membrane and cells eat the cell. That's the... That could be a bumper sticker. Eat the cell. Eating cells provides us with everything we need to make our cells. Egg cell being the quintessential example of a of eating the cell. But also unprocessed foods in general, particularly produce and seaweed, are, are cellular foods. And certainly the cell is loaded with all kinds of nutrients for for uh, making cells, for it's got minerals, min- amino acids, vitamins. But the cell membrane is especially nutritionally valuable. This oily membrane that covers the cells is, is rich in what I call the cholesterol complex foods. Those are the foods that have the entire cholesterol complex. The cholesterol complex exists in nature, or in foods, I should say, that used to be or that had lots of cellul- that had a cellular quality to them. You're not going to get the cholesterol complex in processed food. You're not going to get the cholesterol complex in, in uh, infant formula, by the way, and the cholesterol complex is very important for growing a baby. In fact, the cholesterol complex is important for growing anything. The cholesterol complex is made up of vitamin A and vitamin E and cholesterol and vitamin D and lecithin. It's just incredible stuff for helping the body thrive. And this, the, uh, the cholesterol complex is, is found in, largely in dairy and in eggs and in organ meats. If you're a vegetarian, you're out of luck. You're not going to be getting the cholesterol complex. I'm trying to think here. You may get a little bit in seaweed and algae. Seaweed and algae, if for vegetarians, seaweed, algae, yeast, and uh, let's see if there's anything else. Seaweed, al- mushrooms, seaweed, fungi. Seaweed, algae, mushroom, and fungi for vegans. That's about you're going to be your best sources of nutrients that you're not going to that you tend to you're going to be shy on. Meat is meat and animal foods are very rich in these cholesterol complex kinds of building foods, but if you're vegan or vegetarian, you're not going to do that. Go with the seaweed, lots of seaweed. If I was a vegan or, or if I was a vegan, I would be doing seaweed every day personally. I think you're if you're a vegan, you know you're missing out, but at least mitigate mitigate the 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 very likely if not at least mildly likely possibility that you're going to be deficient in B12 and the cholesterol complex, et cetera, go seaweed. Yesterday we were talking about the glycocalyx. The glycocalyx should also be eaten. If you're a vegan, eat the glycocalyx. Or if, not if you're a vegan. If, for every, everybody, eat the glycocalyx. In addition to eating the cell, in addition to eating the membrane, eat the glycocalyx. That means veggies and fruits. That's where we get our glycocalyx. Our best, our best sources of these kinds of sugars, these old... Uh, uh, these uh, um, essential sugars are going to be produce and veggies, also dairy and eggs, not surprisingly, are good sources of these uh, glycocalyx nutrients. Now there's a thing called the FODMAPS diet. I don't know if you've ever heard of the FODMAPS diet, F-O-D-M-A-P-S. The FODMAPS diet, FODMAP stands for, it's basically all the different kinds of, of uh, uh, glycocalyx building compounds, fructo oligosac, F-O, uh, uh, FODMAPS is F-O-D-M-A-P-S, FODMAPS. And it stands for, it's an acronym that stands for uh, fructose, uh, fructo- F is for fructose, O is for oligosaccharides, D is for disaccharides, I'm trying to think of, uh, M is for monosaccharides, and uh, P is for polyols. Polyols are like sorbitol and xylitol. And these kinds of sugars, because they're so nutri- nutritive, they feed cells, can also feed bacterial cells. So some people will experience bacterial problem, uh, gas and bloating and digestive distress from uh, constipation, diarrhea, just, just overall messed up digestion when they ingest too much of these sugars. Some foods contain lots of these sugars. So the glycocalyx, like everything, you know, you got to be a little bit careful if you're, if, you, if you're predisposed, and that's where the FODMAPS diet comes from. 
personally, I wouldn't be depriving myself of the, of the FODMAP sugars as much as I would be making sure I was healthy at the, at the level of the intestine. Nonetheless, the point is well taken that if you feel awful after you eat you know, certain foods, and by the way, this asparagus, avocados, foods that you wouldn't think necessarily could cause digestive problems could easily cause digestive problems via these FODMAP sugars. There's a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and this is where bacteria invade the small intestine. And most of our bacteria are in our large intestine. The bacteria invade the small intestine. Uh, this can cause all kinds of digestive distress, and the, these, sh these sugars, because they feed bacteria, can be a problem for some folks. The glycocalyx, as we said, is like the ID badge of a cell. And this is the site of attack by plant compounds that are called lectins. Lectins are um, evolutionarily have been evolutionarily designed to attack the outside the the glyco excuse me the glycocalyx. Lectins are defensive molecules. They attack the ID badge and they distort it, and that makes it dysfunctional. So it can't do its work. It can't do its talking, its communication work, or all the things the glycocalyx is responsible for, including movement and recognition and signaling, talking to other cells. So the, the lectins will attack the glycocalyx of, of our bladder cells, for example, and, uh, or our intestinal cell. And uh, it will distort the cell, making it dysfunctional. And then it will also make it the source of an inflammatory response. So it will activate the immune system. This is where autoimmunity comes from. Autoimmunity is the result of a disturbed glycocalyx. Autoimmunity, and an autoimmune, the, the whole thing about autoimmunity is this great mystery, is why does the body attack itself? Why would the immune system attack the thyroid? Why would the immune system attack the nerve cells? So why would the immune system attack you know, the pancreas? Or whatever it attacks in uh, whatever your flavor of autoimmune disease is, why would, the autoimmune, why would the immune system attack itself? Well, it turns out it doesn't know it's itself because the glycocalyx has been disturbed. The ID card is illegible. It looks like the enemy. So the body does what it's supposed to do. The immune system attacks the cells. So these lectins are responsible for all manner of immune response. Gluten intolerance is a classic example of, uh, of a lectin response. Gluten is the iconic lectin. That's why gluten is a problem. Beans have lectins in them. Uh, legumes, nightshades, your tomatoes, potatoes, um, uh, peppers. Cruciferous veggies, all grains, not just wheat, not just, not just the gluten grains either. All grains have lectins. All seeds have lectins. They're packed with lectins. And this makes seeds and grains and uh, nightshades, legumes, cruciferous vegetables problematic for some people, especially the grains. Those are really rich in lectins. The seeds tend to be really packed in lectins because nature doesn't want its seeds eaten. So it has loaded seeds with lectins. Then there's bacteria that can produce lectins. And in fact, the lectins are, play a major role in bacterial growth, infection, proliferation, attack in the body. It's a lot of how a, a bacteria does its work involves lectins, bacterial lectins. All right, 844 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. are back on the bright side. The pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a sec, so hang tight. We do have lines open, though, at 844-236-6010. If you want more vegetables and less meat, but don't want to give up meat altogether, now you have an alternative. You can be a flexitarian. This is from... Uh, from uh, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. You can be a flexitarian, a flexible vegetarian. You can eat primarily a vegetarian diet, but you can eat meat on certain days of the week or when the urge strikes. That's kind of how I do it. I'm a flexitarian. Every once in a while, I get the urge for meat, but uh, I'm not, I would definitely, it, there's just something troubling about meat, I find. Sushi and fish, I can do that, but there's something just, it's just something doesn't seem right about meat. Just sitting around all that protein, sitting around, I mean, it just doesn't look right. If you smell a steak or feel a steak, all bloody and mushy, it just doesn't feel right. That's just, that's just me, though. 
However, there are times when I feel like I, I want a piece of meat. And that's because meat is loaded. It's packed with nutrition. Whether you like it or not, and whether you like philosophically killing animals or not, the, the fact remains that meat is awesome nutrition. Powerful, powerful nutrition. Does that mean you want to eat a lot of it? Probably not. You don't want to have a lot of protein. There's a lot of... Uh, Protein is a very high energy food, not high as, not high as fat or, or sugar, uh, at least in quick energy, but it's got a lot of energy associated with it. And it turns out that when you eat a lot of high energy foods, when you eat a lot of, a lot, a lot of foods that ha have uh, dense amounts of energy in them, this is one of the reasons why we're so obese. We're getting the, the, all the energy from the protein and the fats and the carbs, but we're not getting the nutrients that the body needs to process that energy. That's not a good situation for the body. So, yeah, protein is important, and meat being a great source of protein, if you don't want to be full-blown vegetarian, you could be a flexitarian. Nonetheless, you really want to be making sure that you're getting the micronutrients to match up with these macronutrients if you're going to leverage their power. And that's, that is where supplementation comes in. That's where supplementation excels. There's no way to get the, the, this dense amount of the micronutrients to go with the dense amounts of the macronutrients that we get in our 21st century living in the United States of America standard American diet. All right, from the Journal of the American, Ac uh, Journal of the American Medical Association, exercise, not vitamins, urged to prevent falls in seniors. Falling is the leading cause of injury-related death among people over 65, and seniors who want to avoid falls should exercise, not rely on supplements, U.S. guidelines said today, Tuesday. Well, not so fast there. Yes, exercise is important. And by the way, when it comes to exercise, if you're frail or you're older or you know somebody who's frail or older or have a loved one who's frail or older, when we talk about how exercise is important, we're not just talking about walking the dog, although that's helpful. Certainly there's nothing wrong with going out for a walk or walking the dog. We're talking about stressing a little bit, putting some stress on the body, biking, walking up the stairs, Weightlifting, yes, weightlifting for elderly folks. And I'm not, you know, cr stretching is important. Yoga is very important. Pilates can be helpful. But I'm talking about really putting a, a workload on the body. One of the reasons why we get frail when we're older is we don't put resistance on the body. We avoid resistance on the body. We put biochemical resistance in the body. We don't think anything wrong with that. We eat the wrong foods, you know, smoke and drink, and there's all kinds of biochemical stresses that we put in the body, but we don't put r mechanical stresses on the body. We don't tend to as we get older, and th the net result of that is osteoporosis. You, the body says use it or lose it. If you're not out there working out, if you're not out there putting stress on your body when you're in your 60s and 70s and 80s, you're going to lose it. And this is where deterioration of tissue really kicks in. But that's not to say that you don't need the vitamins and the minerals. And the trace nutrients, I'm assuming they, they're using the word vitamins collectively to refer to all micronutrients when they're talking about this. But actually, in this article, this was from the Journal of the American Medical Association, uh, based on an, a review of 11 randomized clinical trials involving more than 51,000 people, what they did is, the, while well, the headline says exercise, not vitamins, this is a study that was done on vitamin D and calcium. And they compared exercise to vitamin D and calcium. And what they found was exercise was more important than vitamin D and calcium for building bones. Now, maybe, but that doesn't mean that the calcium and the vitamin D aren't important. They are. Calcium and vitamin D are extremely important. But you don't want to just do calcium and vitamin D and not go out and ride your bike. Or not go out and, and lift weights. Or carry, uh, load a backpack up with books or carry a couple gallons of water up the stairs. All right, one more, and then we'll get your phone calls, 844-236-6010. How does dietary restriction extend lifespan in flies? Yes, it's not just human beings that, uh, whose longevity is increased by, uh, by calorie restriction. It's all living creatures. All living organisms respond to dietary restriction by living longer. Calorie restriction it calms the body down. It diverts resources back or, or restores the flow of resources back to building and away from digestion and processing energy. When you put energy in the body in terms of food, whether you're a fly or whether you're a person, you have now cost your body vitamin C. You have cost your body zinc. You have cost your body magnesium. You have cost your body chloride. You have cost your body all the nutrients that it needs to build and to fight cancer and to live a long life. 
So when you restrict your calories, not only do you calm the body down, not, not only does the body not, not have to deal with an influx of energy incoming, it's like at the beginning of MASH, remember the, at the very beginning of the program, MASH, one of the best TV shows ever, uh, the helicopter would fly over and all, all the soldiers would, or all the doctors would run out and meet the helicopters. That's called incoming. And that's exactly what happens in the digestive system. It's like a red alert every time we eat lettuce. It's a, a major emergency, or it's a major, uh, I don't say an emergency, but it's, it's a major stressor on the body when you put anything into your mouth. So when you restrict your calories, now you calm the body down and you're conserving your nutritional resources for the good stuff, for building, for growing, for repair, and for anti-aging. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us welcome Hava from New York to the bright side. Good morning, Hava. Good How you morning. Doing? I want to ask a question. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Hava. When I brush my teeth, I use a soft toothbrush. You, you're bleeding? Find, yeah, but I'm finding in the toothbrush when I brush my teeth. Hava, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not getting you here. You're cutting in and out. Uh, I, I'm, I finding, think you, I'm I think, finding blood in the toothbrush. Okay. Bloody gums, bloody mouth. That, that's very there common. That's no, called, there are no scratches inside my No, gums. I know. that Your connective tissue is breaking down. That's called gum disease. It's very common. Your connective my, tissue is breaking my down. Teeth are, my teeth are not loose at all. No, I know. It takes a lot for your teeth to get loose, but long enough, they will get loose. So that's so called gum. A couple things you, you want to have. You want to go to the dentist for sure. Okay, you want to have that cleaned out. Depending on how bad it is, depending on how bad it is, you may need an antibiotic uh, that they put a local antibiotic inside the teeth sometimes because it can get some pretty serious infections in there. But well, the it's connected nothing swollen inside. No, I know. It's, it's my. It's no. I understand. It is it's swollen. You just blood in the toothbrush, and I don't know. No, where it, it is. It's micro. Hava, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but uh, I, I'm yeah. having a hard time hearing you. So I'm going to take a commercial break. I'm going to let you go, and then I'm going to answer. I'm um, talk about bloody gums uh, when we come back from our break. Okay. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll take a commercial break. Come back with more of your phone calls, 844-236-6010. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, bloody gums, too, as well. Come. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We are talking about uh, gum disease, gingivitis, before we went to our break, if Hobbs is listening, uh, it doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to see swelling in the gums. To ha if you have bleeding in the gums, your gums are, are withdrawing. They're breaking down. The connective tissue is breaking down. It's extremely common. Uh, it's, all, it's more common than not. Uh, blood tends to mean that there's an infection, and there could be, you don't even have to know there's an infection. It could be an, it could be an infection that's been going on for years inside the gums, and the gums have access to the uh, the blood vessels inside the gums have access to the major blood vessels. So uh, it's, a lot of folks think that systemic infections, even heart disease, may be caused by bacterial uh, pro, uh, invasion from broken down gum tissue uh, and broken down blood vessels in the gums. So it's really kind of important. And, and you may, if it's really bad, you may need an antibiotic locally, though. I wouldn't take an oral antibiotic, but they can put a little tiny antibiotic pellet inside your gum. Uh, to help kill the bacteria, and that may be necessary. Uh, as far as taking care of gum disease nutritionally, mm, it depends on if there's bacteria or not, but if there's bacteria, you're not going to really be able to address it nutritionally, and I wouldn't be messing around if it was a bacterial infection. But to build gum tissue, there's lots of nutritional things you could do for that, and that's just all your connective tissue building strategies that we always talk about on this program. Um, <laughs> Bone broth, bone soup, aloe vera, essential fatty acids, zinc, vitamin C. I mean, anything you can do to think of, anything that you can take or anything that you can think of using for arthritis will also help you with your gums. And, it will also, and that includes glucosamine and gelatin, by the way, and hyaluronic acid. And it will also help you with your bones, and it will help you with your joints, and it will help you with wrinkles. Because once you build the connective tissue, when you're using supplements that build connective tissue in one place... You build connective tissue everywhere, and building connective tissue is the very essence of anti-aging. It is what anti-aging is about. Conversely, deterioration of connective tissue is the definition. Almost, there's probably you know, a few other things, very little. But the vast majority of, of the aging process is, if not pretty close to all of it, is a connective tissue problem. 
And building connective tissue is the ultimate anti-aging strategy. Uh, let's see, anything else? Oh, and you know what else? Uh, uh, what was I going to say to Hava here? Uh, uh, the mortal enemies of connective tissue in the mouth are the same as the mortal connective tissues, uh, the mortal enemies of connective tissue in the body, sugar especially. Sugar is, uh, as, be as best as you can avoid sugar, especially sticky sugars that stick in the teeth, uh, the, uh, the better off you're going to be, not just for cavities and not just for rotting of the teeth, but also for building of the connective tissue. Okay, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Betty in New Jersey. Good morning, Betty. Welcome Thank to the Breakfast. Thank you many times, and um, I wanted to call, but she said the number so fast I couldn't oh. get it. Okay. But, but anyway, I had a congestive heart disease, and they want me, and my worst part is I can hardly, um, when I know my, the blood is not pumping up to my heart, and that's probably why they had me on dioxin which I'm sure it is. But, Digoxin? Yes, and yes. I tell you, it's very deadly, and I'm very scared of it. Oh, you should be. It's one of, and, the, yeah. one of the nastiest drugs there is. D yeah, Digoxin and that's is... what I tried to tell them. It's also very toxic, and I don't want to very. go to the see. It's one of the and most toxic drugs there is. Uh, Do you know how it works, Betty? Do you know how the drug works? No, I <laughs> don't. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, it comes from a herb called foxglove. It's one of the first drugs. It may be the first drug, actually, that was ever discovered or invented uh, when they first started, when, when pharmacology really got going in the, in the late, in the 18th, uh, late 18th century, late 1700s. Um, uh, the first drug that they started to work with was foxglove, the extract of foxglove called digoxin. It poisons your heart is how it works. So they think, well, your heart's working too hard. We'll just poison it so it doesn't have to work so hard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I, I'm not glad I got the sense to quit taking it. Well, you're pretty smart, but here's the problem. you, you got to change your life, Betty. And I can tell just from how you're talking, you're not breathing correctly. So first thing you want to do is sit on the couch, and you better practice deep breathing every single day, SDR breathing. Congestive heart failure, number one, is caused by lack of oxygen, and number two, it will exacerbate lack of oxygen. And this is where a lot of the problems happen, the mental problems happen with, uh, well, really, problems everywhere, but especially mental problems that occur after you have a heart attack or after you have, uh, if you've been diagnosed with heart failure. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. Really important. And also blowing off carbon dioxide. I call it SDR breathing. Okay? Yes. Okay. Slow, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. It will change your life, Betty. If you do it now, today. I'm 80 years old. I it doesn't matter. You, for a long, long time. I went to doctors. They almost killed me. Well, I yeah. get out of bed. I well, well, I'm going to fix you up here. I'm going to fix you up here. I'm going to fix you up. Okay. Start, but start I, mean, with I your... just wanted to explain a couple. So I ended up with clots and embolism. And Betty, I had to go to Betty, the hospital. sweetheart, I don't need to hear it because I know okay. I, understand, I understand how that happens. I understand okay. what happens in the body. Slow, deep, rhythmic breathing, number one. Get right. on the beyond, beyond Tangy Tangerine, number two. Start uh, uh, sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine every day. Uh, fill up a water bottle and, and put a little BTT in there. Again, like the breathing, you're going to notice life-changing uh, effects. So you want to make sure you put a little BTT in water. Sip it slowly throughout the day. Okay? Next right. thing, move your body. Your lymphatic system has to circulate. If you're not moving, and I know you're 80, but you can still move oh, your body. I clean my house. I perfect. do everything. Nobody perfect. My work. Perfect. Next time, you, next time you clean your house, just for a couple minutes while you're cleaning, vacuuming, say, right. pay attention to your body while you're vacuuming. You get a better workout from your vacuuming, which is a workout, but you get a better workout if you concentrate on your legs and really concentrate on your legs or concentrate on your arms while you're moving the vacuum. It's harder work to do that, but you'll get much more, uh, much more exercise benefits and oxygenation benefits. Okay. Let, me give you, let me give you a couple more quick things, and then okay. I'm going to have to go. Okay? Get on coenzyme Q10 as I soon as possible. I take 600 a day. Okay, good. You're good there. Take, uh, get, make, get on some selenium. Make sure you're taking four. Okay, selenium. Okay, good. Magnesium. Magnesium. I take okay. that. Uh, All right, good. Day. Good. Carnitine. No, I was taking that and I quit. So we'll get back on carnitine, maybe a gram a day, and get, get yourself on vitamin E. Four hundred. Okay. You already on that vitamin E? No, I, t I, I get some in my. Uh, you don't my get enough. Doctor Sinatra's omega two. Which you don't has, get uh, enough. You don't get enough. Get four hundred IU. And then, okay. and if, it sounds like you may have already done this, but if you haven't, read Dr. Sinatra's book, The Sinatra Solution. It sounds like you've already might have read it, but if you haven't, read it. It's a great okay. book for anybody with CHF. Betty, God bless you, my dear, and uh, 
I, I hope I helped you out. Please call back if we can be of further service. I'm okay. going to let you go. Okay. Thank Take you care. so much. You have okay. a great day. You too, Betty. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to Patty real quick. Patty, is this Patty in Santa Cruz? Yes. Hi, Dan. Hey. Hi. Hey. How are you? I've been listening to you for years. You've helped me so much. I can't even believe it. It's incredible. Thank what you, I've Patty. From you. Oh, thank you for being there for us. So we, I, we the people appreciate you more than you know. Uh, thank you, Patty. I have a question. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I have a question. I'm having a major, major uh, feeling done today. And I'm highly, I don't take any Western meds. I'm highly allergic to all of that stuff. I'm, I'm wondering about what I can ask them to inject me with, you know, for the drilling and the, uh, you, know, and you know what, when I go to the dentist, I tell them, I don't want to feel nothing. I want so much Novocaine. I want the max on the Novocaine. That's what, well, I, that's I, what I do. Be careful about which one they use. That, that's no, uh, the the Novocaine is lidocaine and you know, that's basically the, the go-to source, uh, the go-to anesthetic that the, the dentist will use. When you're done though, uh, if you feel in any pain, there's a couple things you might want to consider doing. Yeah, you know about clove oil for dental pain? Have you ever tried that? I know about it. I've never had any dental pain, but uh, so thank God I never had any. Dental I hope you don't. I hope you don't. No. If no. there's a really cool uh, pain relieving substance that I like to use for uh, for dental pain, actually for all pain, really, it's called uh, palmitoyl ethanolamide or PEA. Look for PEA. You have to get off. The, excuse me. Get off the no. internet. No. Again, tell me I'm going to say it slowly. It's a big mouthful, okay? Palmitoyl ethanolamide, and that's spelled P A. Yeah. What? P A P A what? Just P E A. P E A. Yeah, and technically it's palmitoyl ethanolamide. It's a whole mouthful. I'm not going to spell it for you, but uh, just ask for P E A, and it's for dental pain. It's for really all pain, but especially for dental pain. I want to get. I'm going to let. I'm going to get one more well, call in here. Just yeah. quickly though, if you yeah. just for the best non-allergic uh, reaction, would you choose Novocaine or Lidocaine? They're the same. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're the same. I, 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 I you know, I don't know what no. I think Novocaine is. If Novocaine is not lidocaine, it's very similar to lidocaine. It might be. Uh, it's one of the canes, and I, I don't off the top of my head. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't remember well, I what cane it is. All, I react to all. That I don't. They're canes. All. Yeah, cane. Canes are allergies. It might be procaine now that I think about it. It's one of the canes. Canes are anesthetics, and they're known for being allergenic. So yeah, you do. Have, some people have to be pro, have problems with canes and have to be careful. Lidocaine, benzocaine, pro, procaine, tetracaine. Cane, C-A-I-N-E, is a, is a generic suffix for anesthetics, and some people have problems with it. That's all the time I got. I'm sorry, right, Patty, okay, and I'm sorry if I left you on hold. Uh, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have yourselves a beautiful, awesome, wonderful, spectacular day. We'll, we'll talk to you all later now. Bye for now. 